What's your NSFW detail about a historical figure that's normally left out of the history books? Ancient Egyptians believed the god Atom created the universe by masturbating to ejaculation, and that the ebb and flow of the Nile corresponded to how much he came. To honor this, the pharaohs ceremonially masturbated into the river. Probably said here elsewhere, but Victor Hugo, author of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, among other tales, was a notorious philanderer who had affairs on top of affairs with prostitutes throughout his life. When he died, all of the brothels in Paris had to close because so many prostitutes attended his funeral. Lewis and Clark described the screaming craps that they got from eating unfamiliar food, camas, in detail in their journals. Patrick Henry, the American founding father better known for his quote, give me liberty or give me death kept his wife imprisoned in a cellar because of her frequent outbursts due to postpartum depression. His wife had eventually died in that cellar, and he had buried her in an unmarked grave. Ten tenths quote, but the wife killing part always seems to get left out of history texts. French President Felix IV died while getting his stick sucked. It's said that Henry VIII exploded in his coffin. Dogs then licked up the Henry juice. I'm sorry but my source is in French. I can translate the beginning. King Louis XIV anal fistula. Anal fistula of King Louis XIV is one of the many illness that King Louis XIV had suffered. It was his surgeon Charles Francois Felix which carried the surgery successfully in 1686 after the development of a particular tool and a training on a dozen of indigents. The recovery of the king had a considerable impact in France and in Europe and gave place to numerous civil and religious ceremonies in the kingdom. Princess Diana and her leg gadget, a sex toy that she carried around with her when she went on diplomatic trips. She had even shown a table of foreign officials her toy as a prank on numerous occasions. She also believed it brought her good luck. One time she forgot to bring it with her and actually asked a bodyguard to go back to the hotel to fetch it for her. Edit. OK just checked, and she apparently left it all the way back in the UK, while on a trip to Nepal. Not just at a hotel. And ordered it to be dispatched to the capital Kathmandu. George Washington had severe hematoids. To the extent, that he couldn't even ride a horse into battle sometimes. And had to be pulled on a cart. Not hidden in his home country, but not known by the rest of the world though, is the fact that H. C. Anderson left a mark in his diary, every time he had masturbated, sometimes with a little note on the side, with his thoughts about the session. The first thing the father of microbiology, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, put under a microscope was semen. They understood that semen was integral to the creation of life, but didn't yet understand the concept of single cell organisms. He fully expected to see tiny little humans in his juice. So yeah. The first thing he did, was whack off on a slide, and look at it. Paul Revere would ride from Boston to Newport Reed to cheat on his wife. In school I was taught that Ben Franklin had a string of pearls that was several feet long. He would add a pearl to it each time he slept with a new woman. President Grover Cleveland, 49, married Frances Falsam, 21, in the White House. He was basically her godfather and even bought her a baby bed when she was an infant. She knew him as Uncle Grover as a child and told him she wanted to marry him in the White House one day. After Alois Alzheimer gave the first ever speech describing the symptoms of what would later become known as Alzheimer's disease, no one in the audience asked him any questions or made any follow-up comments. Despite the fact that this was quite literally one of the most important presentations ever given in the field of medicine. For real. Alzheimer's disease affects about 6% of people aged 65 and older. It's a big deal. So why did no one pay it much attention? Turns out they were all much more focused on the next guy on the docket. Who, allegedly, was there to talk about about compulsive masturbation. Big sticks were considered barbaric in ancient history. The Greeks especially thought that it showed men with big rock hard full blooded cocks were full of lust and low intelligence. This is why most of their statues today have them displaying a small stick. 
Kaiser Wilhelm II. The last German emperor wrote very sexual letters to his mum when he was a teenager. Little late but worth a shot. Elizabeth Bishop and Robert Lowell, the poets, had a 30-year letter exchange where Robert, while married, swooned over Elizabeth after he initially met her, declaring his love and want to propose for her or while being married, and her blatant denial and uncomfortable lesbian anguish at this fact. He threatened suicide and lots of self-harm, while she's just like haha let's read this book together and not think about romance. He was a manic cocaine freak, and she was a crazy alcoholic lesbian with a ticket. She drank rubbing alcohol when denied conventional drinks. There's a great play highlighting these events called Dear Elizabeth. Machiavelli once wrote a letter to a friend detailing a sexual encounter with a prostitute, after which he threw up on her due to her alleged ugliness. His excuse, my lust was so desperate that I went ahead and gave it to her anyway. Abigail Adams apparently spent a lot of time worrying that her son John Quincy Adams would jerk off or bang whores when he left the house and advised against doing both in several letters to him. Freud loathed cocaine. He had a friend with a morphine addiction and he thought giving the guy cocaine would cure him. It did not. Gaius Julius Caesar was a huge player. He slept with at least one woman in every town he visited according to his soldiers. He slept with the Queen of Egypt. He slept with his rivals. Cato the Younger's sister. He also slept with a mother and her daughter. Not at the same time. This was fitting as he claimed descent from Venus. The goddess of love and lust. The great magician Haldini once escaped a prison cell, while fully nude as to not hide anything to escape. However what the guards failed to check, was that he hid a skeleton key in his ass checks. William the Bastard's family was torn apart when his two youngest sons dumped a chamber pot on the head of his firstborn. Leading to rebellions, wars, and eventually his firstborn's lifelong imprisonment. Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, who also popularized gothic literature, used to meet up with her future husband, poet Percy Shelley, at the cemetery where her mother was buried. They would meet up and have angsty sex on her mother's grave bc she was goth as hell. Moreover, Frankenstein was inspired by her fascination with reanimation. The idea of bringing something dead back to life. When she learned about this idea, she was obsessed with the idea of bringing back her baby who died days later after being born. Thus sparking the idea of the monster of Frankenstein. Simone Barlever had sex in every country he went with different women and it's explained with details in his biography. He was a really good dancer. I read once that philosopher Jane Jacks Rousseau would pull his pants down and chase after women running backwards in hopes they would spank him. It was his kink. There are sticks everywhere in Pompeii. Dicks. Everywhere. On walls. Streets. Posts. Carved into wood and stone. Arranged in tile mosaics. They're all over the duck in place. You can't swing a cat without whacking a sklan. They're used as arrows to point to brothels. Scrawled on walls in graffiti about how good the women are in the city. When you went to the baths, you'd put your clothes in little cubby holes. And you'd remember which column of cubbies you left them in by the mosaic of a particular sex act above said column. One of the members of the Lewis and Clark expedition was a slave named York. The tribes they came across were quite taken with him. He fathered many many children during the trip. Ben Franklin slept around and mostly stayed in France for the prostitution. Oscar Wilde described himself as addicted to sucking cock and said it inspired him. Leonardo da Vinci kept poems and jokes about penises. Scrodina got with a ton of prostitutes, so that he could take care of his male urges, and thus focus on his work. Leaving him the option of not taking a wife who may take him away from his work. Governor Morris wrote the language to much of the constitution. Including the preamble. He also had a wooden leg, because he broke it so bad it had to be amputated. The accepted story is, that his leg was caught in the reins of his horse as they got spooked. But the rumor that went around was he broke his leg jumping from a window to escape the husband of a woman he was sleeping with. 
in revolutionary France. A crowd surrounded his carriage, because they thought he was a French aristocrat. He took his wooden leg off, and pointed it at them saying he lost his leg in the pursuit of liberty. He also died from complications, after using a whale bone as a catheter. And Bonnie used to fight with one boob out. Just to show, that not only are you about to get murdered, but you're about to get murdered by an 18 year old girl. Benjamin Franklin liked to take air baths which meant sitting in the window of his London house with the windows open, totally nude. I have visited that very house, which is now a museum, and stood in that very window. They are big Georgian style windows and I suspect that anyone in the house opposite or possibly even glancing up from the street from the right angle slash direction would have seen the full founding father. Alexander the Great likely had a gay lover named Hephaestion. Diogenes supposedly claimed that Alexander only ever yielded to Hephaestion's thighs apparently. Alexander also spent the modern day equivalent of 300 million dollars on his funeral. Raphael, the Italian painter, not the ninja turtle, is believed to have died from exhaustion from non-stop sex. Edgar Allan Poe married his 13 year old cousin and would sleep in her coffin with her, after she passed away. None of the history books have mentioned the mysterious flying turd on Apollo 10. Can find the full transcript. Here, the poop incident starts on page 416. If anyone want to read more, edit. Direct link. John Batman, one of the founders of Melbourne, Australia, actually died of syphilis, and lost his nose due to the disease. He ended up in a wheelchair and his wife left him, when he got sick for a close friend. Benjamin Franklin was the first known source of the phrase just put a bag over her head. During Mexico's independence fight there was a lady called La Gura Rodriguez that means Rodriguez a blonde. She used to spy on the Spanish monarchy generals, by going to bed with them. She passed information to the independent army, and had a major role on Mexico's winning the fight. After the independence was declared, the new monarch, Agustin de Turbide, made the entire army march in front of La Gura's house. They were lovers, and she was the one, that inspired him to action. She was also lover of Alexander von Humboldt and Simon Bar She also escaped the Inquisition trial by showing her boobs. She is never mentioned in the traditional history books or school lessons. During 1942 in a war planning visit to Washington, a British delegation including Winston Churchill stayed at the White House. The president wheeled into Churchill's bedroom one afternoon, to discover the prime minister stalking the room in the nude. Puffing on a cigar as he dictated to a male secretary. As Roosevelt spun about to leave, Churchill called him back, adding, The prime minister of Britain has nothing to conceal from the president of the United States. Edit. Wow. My first popular post. Source for this story. Cray, E. 1990. General of the Army. George the 100th. Marshal Soldier and Statesman. Kindle it. Pages. 253. Cooper Square Press. Frederick the Great of Prussia. One of the most renowned military slash national leaders in European history. Flanaminge. He never even tried to hide it much. His dad openly loathed his effeminate behaviors. He had a Dutch boyfriend as a teenager, who his father had executed in front of his own eyes, to teach him a lesson. His dad later forced him to marry a woman, who be immediately divorced after his dad's death. He even wrote, after losing a battle, Fortune has it in for me. She is a woman. And I'm not that way inclined. Not to say, being anything other than straight is inherently NSFW. But anything not heterosexual in history, is obviously almost never talked about. I'm currently reading a book about pirates, and in the chapter about Edward Teach, Aka Blackbird, it mentions when he married his 14th wife, who was a 16 year old girl, and after being with her all night, and I quote it was his custom, to invite 5 or 6 of his brutal companions to come ashore, and he would force her to prostitute herself to them all, one after another before his face. Now, I remember learning about Blackbird in school as a child, and I do not recall anyone ever telling me he was a pimp, and a cuck. John Smith. He made up the story of Pocahontas. She was actually 10, 
when he arrived so, and he made up a lot of his stories. Napoleon insisted his wife wear the same underwear for weeks on end, because he loved the smell so much. He would keep soiled underwear with him, and write about how much he enjoyed the scent. Margaret Mitchell, author of Gone with the Wind, apparently had a very large dildo collection. Learned this in a graduate history class, and I was floored. Julius Caesar ducked around, like, all the way around, his political allies wives. One of Pompey's wives for example, not Julia, his enemy's sisters, Cato the Youngers, guys, girls, anybody. He was described during a meeting of the Senate as a man for every woman, and a woman for every man.